Hello everyone and welcome back to the workshop. Today's video is an update on the sideways ROM configuration in the BBC Micro Export Edition. Now if you don't know much about BBC Micros, it's perhaps worth mentioning that sideways ROMs allow you to add utilities and programming languages like these right along with the operating system. And the export edition of the computer is a bit more interesting, so I'll be covering the various configuration options, my favourite settings, and some special modifications of my own. ROMs on the BBC Micro. Now, my US model was supplied like this. A 16K ROM for OS, a 16K for BASIC, and a 16K with the disk and net filer in it. Please ignore the handwritten sticker. And it works. So what's wrong with that, you say? It's a BBC Micro. Well, yeah, but it's not an ordinary BBC Micro. Let me explain. Power off. So, we're going to take the operating system and BASIC out. We're going to change a link, this one, and we're going to put in a single chip. with operating system and basic. Magic, still working. That's a 32K ROM. Now you can do this with that link and that'll get you this socket. And you can do it with that link and that'll get you this socket and when it comes to these two, strange things are afoot. While I was trying to investigate these ROMs, I started having difficulties. I thought there was something wrong with this socket because of this business of it only activating one half of the chip. And then it turned out there was something wrong with the socket. They were the old fashioned type with the, um, the wiper only on half of the, uh, the hole on each pin and the chip actually wasn't making contact and it, it was intermittent so in the end I took the board out and I put brand new sockets in all positions here so that fixed that problem but I still wasn't getting two ROMs active in this location so while I was there I socketed IC76 which is the one that I've been showing you on this schematic, that DMUX and that's over here Let's try and zoom in on that. I guess you can make it out in the corner of the screen there. That's now socketed. So I'm going to type star ROMs. That's something that's built into the toolkit ROM. And you get a list of the ROMs that are in there. So I'm expecting, I'm looking at the ROMs I know you can't see them from there, maybe I can adjust a little bit, yeah, you might be able to see those. So here on the left I've got the OS and BASIC, well the OS is a given because here it is running, BASIC is here, the next chip actually has four 8K images but as I've already explained you can only get two of them to run, so this has Edikit and Sleuth in it, which should come up here. Notice they're next to each other, one is odd, one is even, as explained. The next one, oops, bump the brake key. The next one is Xmon and Basic Editor, and here they are, once again, next to each other. Then we have our ROM with the problem. This has ADT and ROMIT in there. Now I can see ROMIT, but there's nothing in the odd numbered box. There's no ADT. And finally Toolkit Plus, which of course is running because that's what's generated this message. It shows up here. There's no possibility of having a 32K chip in that socket. All right, so 
but you can see it doesn't work. And my plan is to do that. So we're basically taking pin one and connecting it to pin two, but it has to be using diodes to or those together. Yes, I could use an OR gate. Two diodes and a resistor is just as good. In fact, if you look at the original schematic, you'll find the same thing being done. All right, now to do that, purely experimentally, you understand, I built this, and this is basically a 74139 in a socket, but modified. Can you see that leg there? I've basically bent it under the chip so it doesn't make contact with the socket, and I've soldered two diodes and a resistor just as I showed you. So that effectively modifies the circuit. I'm going to take the original IC out. And I'm going to plug this contraption in. Done. Here we go, powering up. Well, there's no smoke, so that's a good thing. Done that. <laughs> okay, I think it's found a new a new version of ROMs. It must be inside ADT because look, ADT is now alive. So, Acorn, I fixed your bug. There is one little catch which I'll explain, but it's it's no big deal because. It, it effectively means you can't use a feature that you would really never want to use. In fact, it's so obscure I haven't even tested my theory about what it does. So there we go. You now have one, two, three, four 32K chips, each with a ROM slot and a single 16K. Yes, we could also do something about this end one, but the problem is it needs, it needs the address bus fixing on the chip, not just the spare chip select. So we'd need a fair bit of work on the logic to make that selectable so that you could use upper and lower halves. I don't think it's worth the trouble doing that. So while I'm looking at hardware, let me pick up the camera. I just want to show you what I did about that no connection point on the AND gate that I showed you earlier. You remember this thing? This had no connection on it and I felt it needed pull-ups. Now because they're both being pulled to the same thing you can connect them together and I've used a 3.3k resistor, in fact I've done the same with this one. 3.3 seems to be a value that Acorn use a lot. To be honest it is just a pull-up. You can use almost anything as long as it's bigger than 3.3k, don't use anything too small. So if you have a look down here, you see there is an IC down here with a resistor on the top of it. There we go. That's IC45 and that's my pull-up resistor to ensure that those unused pins don't float about. And I've not bothered socketing that because for me that's a permanent fix and it, it never needs to be removed. So what can you do with these ROM links? Well, the way I have it configured now is the way I want to keep it, which is basically to allow 32K in as many slots as possible. And with the basic two configured to be the highest priority in slot F so that it will always boot first. Now the links involved, there's one under the keyboard, which is a nuisance. There's one over on the left way over here, in fact there are two here. This top one, leave it alone. The bottom one 
is either north, south or east, west. North, south means that this ROM is the high priority. East, west means this one. So leave it in north, south if you want to have normal operation with basic in that slot. The remaining links you can see here. This one determines 16K or 32K operation of this chip. So obviously you want it in the 32K position, which is the way you see it here. It's, it's to the east. These two are for this one. And the bottom one is the 8K option and the top one is the 16K option. So you would typically leave them the way they're shown here with the, the bottom one to the west and the top one to the east. This one controls both of these. But remember that without my modification, that is this uh, hodgepodge thing over here, this one will not behave like a 32K chip. Same configuration options as this one. And finally, no configuration link for this one. Now I suppose I should mention S24, which is the single link, it's really hard to point, right there. S24 S24 determines whether you're using the bottom bit of the ROM number to control the ROMs or A13. Now that's really strange because what you're suggesting is that an address bit is controlling which chip you want to run. But after a bit of thought I realised that I think what that means is that you can put two 8K ROMs, one here and one here, <laughs> although actually that does depend on which way you've configured the link that swaps that one with that one, but let's assume you've configured it so that this one's the high priority, huh? so it will be east-west on um, S25. Now you can put an 8K ROM in this and an 8K ROM in that, and the contents of those ROMs would be a 16K ROM image with the bottom half here and the top half there. And it should run that ROM. I know that sounds crazy and I, I can't understand. Unless Acorn had access to a really cheap batch of 8K ROMs, I'm not sure what they were playing out there. Now when you make my modification this thing with the diodes. If you try to switch S24 to the other position you're going to get a bus contention because you're going to have more than one switched on at once. So don't do it, don't cross the streams, leave it set where it's intended to be. Uh, it doesn't really serve much purpose. So that's really all there is to know about the ROMs. Um, one little thing to add, if you have an upgrade board to plug in, you might have a problem with this this beep. You see, because these ROMs are spread across the whole range of possible ROM values from 0 to F, I can't help feeling that they would clash with any ROM numbers that were being used by the expansion board. In the original B, they were neatly pushed up to the top end of the list, so C, D, E and F. So to summarise, while the original Model B had only two spare sideways ROM slots, once you had this support, the X board has five or six with my modifications. Given that the rightmost slot is only 16K in size, I think that its best use is for sideways RAM. In fact, if you've seen my earlier video, you'll know there was a homemade one in there, so I refitted that, along with its pink read-write wire, and I've chosen the ROMs that I want permanently installed. Anything else I need can be loaded into the sideways RAM on the fly. Now the lid is back on and I'm hoping it will stay that way for a while. 
although I do have some more upgrades and add-ons to work on in the near future. Well that's it, hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.